92% of active managed funds in 15 years perform worse than their index of reference. In fact, they destroy value from their portfolios of their clients. So how can we pretend to be so lucky to be able to select today, actually randomly, those 8 funds that in 15 years from now will not destroy our savings? As John Bogle said, don't look for the needle in the haystack, just buy the haystack. So it's useless to try to find those stocks that will perform better than the market and invest only in those. It's far better to buy the entire market. Hey, it's Dario and this is DVD Finance, a platform where we can share our best tips and tools when it comes to trading, investing or finance in general. And if you love the subject, please consider subscribing. The main goal of active managed funds is to be the index of reference. So compared to ETFs, they not only have to follow the index, they have to have better performances, otherwise they simply didn't do their job. As it's possible to understand by the name, actively managed funds are actively managed by professional traders or investors. The problem is that because of their enormous size in terms of money, these funds have great difficulties entering positions. In addition to this, actively managed funds have also significantly higher costs in comparison to passively managed funds such as ETFs. These costs are of course deducted from the investors. And lastly, we should also consider the fact that the managers of these funds change. So we could have 10 years with a particularly great manager and the next years with a manager who is less great. So let's deepen in this video these three major problems and let's understand if it's better to invest in actively managed funds or in ETFs. The answer is ETFs, by the way. Usually, active managed funds manage capital which are on the order of hundreds of millions of dollars in size. This aspect puts them in a very difficult position the moment they want to invest in a particular company, especially if the company is relatively small. By difficult position, I mean that the buy price could vary significantly from what the trader had in mind. In the video where we talked about the stock market, we understood that for every share that is bought, there has to be a share sold, and for every share that is sold, there must be a share bought. This means that if the fund wants to buy a big amount of shares, it will have to find a compromise on the price with the market. This is because it's going to be very hard to find the same amount of shares on sale. So because of this, the buy price could vary even by a lot in disadvantage in respect to what the manager had planned. Another problem of actively managed funds is the ability of the manager. We could in fact find a lot of efficient and well-performing funds that have been like that for many years. This could mean that the manager, who was in charge for that period, for that particular fund, has been very good at managing the capital. But what's gonna happen in the future? How can we know if the manager will have the same performances? And what if he retires? Who can guarantee that the next manager will make us earn any money? For this simple reason, looking at historical prices of the fund is yes important, but till a certain degree. This is because the history only tells us the ability of the current manager for the past period, but not for the future one. The third problem of actively managed funds is the cost. As we previously said, actively managed funds can reach very high costs, even around 2% or 3% a year. This makes it very difficult to generate a profit since every year we already start with a loss of 3%. This means that in the hypothetical case that we have been lucky to select a fund that in 15 years from now will have performed as much as the market without counting the costs, the fact we have to pay 3% every year could bring our profits to be very small, if not zero. So at the end, we simply transferred our profits to the manager. It's a pity that we cannot predict the future anyways. Because of these three major problems, we can conclude that actively managed funds are not 
unfortunately, a good instrument to use when we want to invest and diversify in the stock or bond market. On the contrary, it would be better to use ETFs which opposite to actively managed funds have very low costs and simply have the goal to replicate an index of reference. So there is no human component taking decisions on the investments. As we can see from this image, 92% of actively managed funds on the US market in a period of 15 years had a worse performance than their index of reference. If we look at the Eurozone, the same is true. 90% of the funds in 5 years had a worse performance than the index. Therefore, increasing the risk to have worse performances is not exactly a smart investment decision. In the next video we're gonna talk about the bond market. We will understand what bonds are, how they work and for which type of investor are useful. So if you don't wanna miss out on any further video, I highly suggest you subscribe to the channel immediately so that you can be notified on any new release. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. This is one of the few ways that I have to see if you like the videos and therefore keep posting. Nonetheless, I will see you in the next video.